Over the years, the New York City subway has had a wide variety of different trains used in revenue service around the system. Currently, we have a total of 11 different types of rolling stock running on the many different lines in the system. All of them have differing door positions, designs, and onboard systems, with our system not really having a standard subway car design. Even some of our new technology trains have differing door positions from each other, like the R179. This is one of the things that prevents us from being able to fully install platform screen doors in the system. But that's not the point of this video. In this video, we will be discussing how we can improve New York City's subway car design. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to get more from Mystic Transit, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. First off, let's talk about one of the most important things the MTA just can't seem to get right. Displaying useful information. Many of our trains in the system barely display any useful information. The most information you'll see is a subway map or fine display on a train, but never any screens displaying any type of service changes or things that might be useful to passengers during their ride. The screens that you'll usually find on trains only display advertisements, which makes me wonder What's the point of having these new flashy screens if you're not going to use them to display useful information? We already have advertisements on our trains. We've had advertisements on our trains for over 50 years. We don't need new screens to show us the same advertisements we've been seeing for years now. These screens should be installed to show information like service changes or transfers while the train is entering the station. Maybe even a diagram of where the exits are relative to the train car. Having useful information like this displayed on the screens will improve the commuter's experience while riding the subway. It'll get them to the exits faster and inform them on what's different that they might need to plan around or avoid during their commute. These are quality of life improvements which were proposed to be introduced with the new R211 subway cars, but so far in the limited videos we've seen of the train, it looks like these features are missing. Displaying useful information like transfers and the like on the numerous screens on the trains isn't the only thing that could be improved to give more information to the passenger. New York City has an issue of not having announcements that deliver enough information in a short time frame. Now, when I said this, I bet you instantly thought of the older SME trains, where the conductors make manual announcements. Announcements on these trains are usually inaudible or done by someone who just sounds monotone and like they hate their job. Now, there are a few ways we can change this. 1. We need to fix the PA systems on some of our older trains. And 2. We need to encourage conductors to be more audible and enthusiastic while making announcements. With that, ask them to give more information in a short time frame. Listing all subway transfers and the most important bus transfers is a good start, but how about also listing points of interest in the area? For example, an announcement for a 6 entering 33rd Street could be something like this. This is 33rd Street. Transfer is available to the M34 and M34A select bus services. And you can exit here for the Empire State Building on 5th Avenue. It's not only the manual announcements on the SMEs that need to be improved though, it's also the automated announcements on the new technology trains that need to be improved. So many of the announcements are spliced and cut, and just voiced by too many people that it isn't fast, nor do they flow well. These announcements include all of the useful information that riders need, but take too long to finish, which might increase dwell time within a station, or force the conductor to wait until an announcement finishes to open the doors. There's two possible fixes to this. Record all of the announcements over again, or just speed them up. Cut out the unnecessary pauses. Moving on from announcements and to the design of the trains, I have something very simple to say here. New York City has a very stale look for its subway cars. 
Our subway cars have had the same grey, stainless steel design for god knows how long. Back before the general overhaul in the late 1900s, a lot of our cars had different colors. We had Redbirds, Bluebirds, 46s with blue stripes, and more, and that was a good variety in design. Every subway car didn't look so similar that it felt like they were all the same. Now, well, they all kinda look the same. Yeah, we have some ad wraps and that New York State livery on some of the R160s, but we don't see many of them. Things like the Supreme wrapped R143, as much as I don't like the red front, were interesting and a nice change in design. Simply put, we need more variety in the system. The stale design I previously mentioned doesn't only apply to the exterior of the train. We need to look at the interior as well. I've heard many refer to the interiors on the new tech trains as a hospital. All the light blue and the bright lights just isn't appealing to many. A lot of people like the warmer lighting found on our SME trains. Trains like the R46 and R62 have cozy lighting, light colorful seats, and overall a much more appealing interior than the new techs. In addition to that, all of our newer trains have longitudinal seating. Now I know this type of seating configuration is preferred over transverse because it allows for more standing room and overall capacity on board the trains, but personally, I prefer the transverse seating found on the R46 and 68s. Going through the Rockaway Flats with a window seat is so relaxing, and I wish that we could have some variants of the new tech trains with transverse seating. I think taking some inspiration from London's S8 stock trains would not be a bad idea. They have transverse seating with armrests, cozy lighting, and it looks like there's still a good amount of standing room. Not to mention the fact that they do this with open gangways. Funnily enough, the idea for this video was created by me one day looking at some of London's rolling stock and what they do right and comparing it to some of New York's, looking at what we do wrong. Our trains are not horrible, but they can definitely be improved. If you have any thoughts about what I talked about in this video, tell me down in the comment section below. And if you would like to get more from Mystic Transit, like, subscribe, and consider supporting me via channel memberships or super thanks. Special thanks to Stuart Guberman for supporting the channel at the Train Service Supervisor tier.